Now, this guy, Jeremiah, he was fashioned for this because it says in verse 1 that he was the son of Hilkiah, uh, who was a priest. So, uh, Jeremiah, you might note his name means uh, God will exalt, God will raise, uh, God will anoint. I have all this for you in your slides if you follow along on your idle phone. But if you're not and you're a note taker like me, then he was, his name, names meant something at that time. He was raised up, just like his name said, for the hardest time in the nation of Israel to minister in. And he is also the son of a priest. With that comes along expectation and some responsibility. His dad is, as it says here, a priest named Hilkiah. So this makes Jeremiah interesting because he is both a prophet and a priest. Now, in the Old Testament, there were three Old Testament offices that one could hold. The highest offices in the land were prophet, priest, and king. And uh, many of your great Old Testament figures would be one of those three. A couple of your great Old Testament figures would be two of those three, but none were ever to be three for three because the only person that has ever been able to hold all three offices is the man, not the myth, Jesus Christ, the God-man. And he is the prophet, uh, the priest, and the king. Now that said, as Jeremiah is a prophet and a priest, the New Testament emphasizes that we as Christians are also to be uh, prophets and priests. We don't hold the office, but we do perform the function. So here's how it goes. A prophet is, simply put by definition, the mouthpiece of God. So when people think about prophecy, they mostly think about prophets foretelling, uh, you know, what God will do in the future, which is a part of their ministry. All of the prophets do that. But a bigger part of their ministry is the second aspect of it, and that is to foretell to tell forth the word of God in a way that's applicable to the time they're living in. And so we are, as Christians, and we sit here studying the word of God to be equipped saints for the work of the ministry, we are preparing ourselves to be prophets. We learn the word of God, we implement the word of God, and then as our lives and our speech shares it, we tell the word of God, we forth tell the word of God to a people that we're living around and in. And if you wanted to meander with me over to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, when Paul talks about the gifts, he mentions that love is the greatest thing. He spends a whole chapter on love. But as he wraps up that chapter with these now remain faith, hope, and love, but the greatest is love, he segues into chapter 14, and this is what he says. In verse 1, he says, pursue love, and you should desire spiritual gifts. God has gifted each of us with gifts to use to expand the kingdom and to bless others, and we should desire them. We can pray for them. So he says you should think about praying for prophecy, because if you had the gift of tongues, where you could speak in angelic language to God, what happens is nobody understands it except God. Now, it edifies God, but he who speaks it, he speaks in mysteries. But verse 3, he says, he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort, that is encouragement to men. So when we prophesy, if you speak the words of God to people, it should both exhort and it should edify as well as encourage. And so you speak in a tongue, that's angelic, you speak to yourself, but you who prophesy, you prophesy and you build up the church. And so Jeremiah was a prophet, as we are called to be, but he was also a priest. And the priest has two functions as well. A priest is a mediator or a representative, and he represents God to people. And First Peter makes it very clear that we are called to be priests. As God changes our lives when Jesus comes in, by the love and the power of Christ, we then become representations of Christ to people. We represent God. We're, we're Jesus with some skin on him, if you will, to people around us. And we are supposed to be able to say, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Not, oh boy, don't look to me, just look to Christ. No, the Bible says we're supposed to grow so we can say, imitate me as I imitate Christ. And then we're supposed to have 
by the love of Christ within us, being forgiven of our sins, we see others broken and we represent them, people to God as intercessors. We pray for them. We ask God to uh, intercede in their lives and change them. And when you get this glimpse into heaven, you'll find something interesting. In chapter 5 of Revelation, verse 10, we get this gl glimpse around the throne and there's creatures there singing and, and they're singing this song. Uh, in Revelation 5, and I think it starts in verse 9 and it goes into verse 10. And they're, they're singing out of every tongue and people and tribe and nation, you have made us priests and kings. And so when we get to heaven, we actually get the king function of the Old Testament offices. But that said, we have been made them to our God and we shall reign on the earth. So Jeremiah is a picture of, if you will, uh, the New Testament Christian. 